Hello everybody, it's Lucy Wolf here, sleep consultant and author of The Baby Sleep Solution. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about moving your toddler into a big bed. And I suppose there's lots of different schools of thought on this transition, but I'll give you my own and my own experience in terms of working in my practice with families. I believe the best time to make the transition is when your baby or your child is at least two and a half and ideally closer to three plus before you make that transition. And I suppose I really feel that, um, of course, some parents will report that they made the transition earlier and everything was good for them. And that's often the nature with sleep, that things that one parent does works fine for them and things that another parent does doesn't work a bit well for them. And I suppose it is always about finding what works for you. But for me, as a practitioner, I find that the longer you can keep your child in their cot, the better. Uh, and actually, there's even a study done last year that supported that kids actually better outcomes when they stayed in their uh, cot for closer to three. The reason that I uh, support waiting until they're older is that what you really want developmentally is for your child to have what we call impulse control and basically all that is is a level of understanding not just how to do an instruction like put rubbish in the bin or close the door but you know to follow an instruction through like don't cross the road without holding my hand don't touch the cooker or the fire and that t skill set doesn't typically emerge until closer to you know, from two and a half onwards. And again, I feel often that if your child has been toilet trained, I actually think that's a really good indication that a big bed transition is is, is suitable for you because if you've, they've, if you've toilet trained them, there's a high level of understanding. They can learn to wait. They're really following instructions. And so as a result of that, I suppose my little party line would be, I like them to be finished their nap. And again, most children have finished their nap somewhere around age three and that run up to age three. Lots of children still nap beyond three and you're not to be worried if your child is one of those. That's typical. But again, a lot of their peers will have grown out of their nap biologically by around three. So I think if they're no longer napping, it's one less complication where the big bed is concerned. And I feel that if their nappy is gone, so nap free and nappy free, I think then that we know that they can see instructions through, like stay in your bed, don't get out. This is our expectations of you or this is what we're going to hone in our little house household uh, in terms of our sleeping practices and um, then if those two items are in place then I feel that maybe that transition can start to be smooth for you and I think obviously it's better if you make that transition that you already have a robust sleeper someone that sleeps without maybe a parent um, or that it's all quite minimal if you're looking to transition from parental dependency again that transition is actually a really good time and I have a really great way of marketing to older children how to have a lovely bedtime routine that's completely separate to sleep and then we get into bed and the bed is reserved only for sleeping so I suppose once we make that transition from cot to big bed I think it's a good idea that the bedtime routine that always happens in the bedroom but happens outside of the bed and I like there to be a complete definition this is why I create my bedtime zone on the floor cushions rugs uh, fairy lights and it's in this space we do our bedtime routine and then when the light goes off and I often put the light on a timer I'm just looking for my timer here so you know just like one of these devices people often use them for their Christmas tree lights um, and you just you allocate the 20 minutes or 30 minutes for your bedtime routine and once the lamp, lamp goes off that's the end of the bedtime routine and you know you can layer things in like I love to to do the conversation three things you know three things that you love to do in today and three things that you're looking forward to tomorrow and then loads of kisses loads of hugs and then you escort your child into their bed I encourage them to climb into the bed themselves put the covers up on themselves and then again if you're transitioning from laying down with them holding them rocking them rolling them I would encourage you to use my stay in support approach and you can read more about that in my book, The Baby Sleep Solution. And again, there's a whole marketing exercise in the book about for older children when you're helping them to sleep a little bit better um, and just getting the parameters right. And again, if you don't normally stay with your child, then the hope is that they, although they have increased mobility because they're no longer con contained by the cot, that you've explained to them in advance when we get into bed it's and lights out, I want you to close your eyes, you know, think about all the lovely things that happened to you today and then start to go to sleep so that getting out of the bed like a jackrabbit isn't an issue. And again, unfortunately, when your child is a little bit on the younger side, it's 
sometimes, not all of the time, but sometimes it's more challenging to keep them in the bed. So again, again, if you made that transition a little bit too soon, don't be afraid of getting the cot back out. If I'm honest with you, with parents in my practice, if your child is under two and you put them into a bed, I'd probably be encouraging you to put them back into the cot because there's probably another year in the cot and we can make that really growthful. And rather than being afraid of the cot or lots of parents say that their child come, climbs out of the cot, I'm really in favour of teaching your child how to be and how to feel safe and secure in the cot so they don't feel like they need to be like a mere cat or like a jackrabbit either getting out of the cot and being a danger to themselves so look that's my little thought on the bed uh, big bed transition I'm going to post it um, in my in my on my website sleepmatters.ie just some more tips about making that transition if it's relevant to you at this moment of time so my sleep my website is sleepmatters.ie and my book is the baby sleep solution and that covers sleep issues from birth to six years of age and you can purchase also my website and books all over so listen thanks for stopping by and i look forward to seeing you again really soon